Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about AQ. The gates are open on my server Kurtanos and it's time to sink our teeth into the next phase of raiding in classic. This video is going to be a guide before the guide. My first impressions of AQ and specific tips for each boss fight before I've really had a chance to sink my teeth into these fights and come up with really good strats, do good parses, all of those good things. Right now my guild is going through progression so I just wanted to show you each fight, what I know so far, things I've noticed. There will be more detailed guides for each fight coming soon, but as we all learn, I wanted to give my first few impressions. I have done AQ about one and a half times right now. I've done one full clear and also one clear to where we got everything but see Thune down. Our AQ opened on a Monday, reset is on Tuesday, so we were able to get in and go hard, but we did. We were not able to get Cthune down. I don't say Cthune right according to the comments, so I'm going to fix that. So we were able to get Cthune down on our second night and all in all AQ has been a really fun experience. What you're seeing right now on the screen is the opening is the opening ceremony or whatever you want to call it. And that was crazy on our server. I, I'm on Pacific time. So I had to wake up really early for this and it was about five in the morning. Um, I woke up and my rest of my guild was already going strong we met up and we rode out and our our servers were dominated so the lions sort of had to like creep their way up to the gates um while the swarm of horde was right outside the gong but they ended up ringing it they ended up ringing the gong and all hell broke loose you'll see all of these different things spawn there's better videos to show the opening event what was really cool was just seeing that many people in in one place it really was something it's something that i've looked forward to ever since i started playing classic i knew that eventually this event would happen i actually was able to witness this back in the day i faked sick from school and stayed home and and did this opening event which was really really cool and so all hell sort of broke loose i didn't farm the entire 10 hours for rep i actually came in and got a few boss kills our guild actually killed two out of the three world bosses i'll show you all let's find them my guild actually got two out of the three world bosses down the colossus of ashy the three really big guys that spawn in the hives we were able to get both of them down we pulled them into the hives as you'll see um, this was the first thing where we learned the mechanic where we cannot do that we have to go inside yeah i tried to health pot out of that it didn't work eventually what we figured out and let's see if i can find some footage of this was that we pulled them down into the hives and then dps ran in and out during those knockbacks and we're able to kill two out of three and they had some really good drop yeah so here's the kill we ended up getting we ended up getting it down and it dropped um, a couple epics blade of hana curl blade Uther's strength one of my guild mains actually got a tibu's blazing longsword which he sold for a ton of money so a lot of good drops from the event and all in all excitement was really high this was a monday morning um, before reset so we had to do all of this before it reset and we were able to go in and have a really successful first night of aq so first impressions of the opening event if you haven't experienced that on your server if you can try to go to it there's a lot of lag at the beginning but once people start milling out into the different areas you'll find that um it calms down a lot. So a few things just getting started before you even head into AQ. First off, get your consumables ready. Your nature resist set ready. I shouldn't have to, there's, I'll link videos about the best nature resist guide. You should know what the consumables are by now. If not, watch some of my other videos. You need a lot of stuff, guys, a lot of stuff. You need your full nature resist set, a ton of consumables. This is progression. This isn't BWL for the 18th time where you run through and you can just do it with nothing if you want to. This is AQ long raid, not in a private server guild or anything like that. We're not random with full world buffs. We've not all done this a ton of times. This is a lot of people doing this for the first time. We've got some raid leadership who've done this before. So this is progression. I mean, we are learning things. So one thing to keep in mind is that you will wipe probably, um, don't worry about losing your buffs on the first couple weeks. Eventually you're going to be able to get through this come in parse real high with all world buffs for, for right now what's most important is learning what you need to do because the unfortunate aspect of classic is that you don't get a lot of time each week on these boss fights to practice there's not it's not like retail where you can do the normal version the heroic version the mythic version the lfr version there's really only one time a week you can do this so it is very valuable that you pay attention and at least do some amount of research before just to know different mechanics of bosses but being real guys there's not a ton that you need to know, but 
there are things in aq unlike bwl that if you're doing the wrong thing at the wrong time you're just going to die and look like an idiot um or what or kill other people especially on Cthulhu. so if as much prep you can as much prep you can do to like watch a video i'll link a great one below um or even just look at the mechanics for, for specific bosses that's going to help you a lot before we start talking about the bosses let's talk about the trash um this trash is you know it's not crazy hard but there's a few things about this trash that if you're attacking the target with thorns you're going to die um if you're not paying attention if you're not listening you need to you don't just run in and immediately start going ham on these guys like you do in trash and bwl let your tank let all the tanks get the targets to the right places let your raid leads or raid callers figure out which attack which target you need to attack first and also always this is very important in this in this in this instance be sure to check your threat meter a lot you not want to pull aggro with some of the mechanics that these guys do so you know while we all want to run into the new instance and start smashing face like we have been we need to take time to learn take time to let every other people learn as well so if you expect to come in here and do 1.5k dps on the first boss and you're not in like a super crazy parsing guild you're in for a bad time just take it slow figure out what you need to do and just have a good time so right now we're getting the trash down you know very important to listen to these calls when you're when this trash is going on so let's go ahead and skip to the first boss i mean the trash is hard guys but this it's the ending trash that's really annoying and this isn't a, a trash guide video um your raid, raid leads should know what the abilities do and, and what they need to call out um but just know that the trash in in this place can be pretty deadly okay so the prophet scarum is the first boss fight and a couple of things uh of note for this boss fight is there's a good amount of stuff that happens in this fight and there's some rng depending on whether or not you get mind controlled that could really scuff your parse so parsing on this guy is going to be a do, knowing um getting having high uptime on the boss when so scarum is going to you're all going to run up onto um that platform and start dpsing and it's going to be really important that you get a lot of uptime not only on the boss before he splits but also when he splits you immediately switch target you don't you have intercept ready to go so that you can immediately intercept onto the target that you need to dps down and keep your rotation going that's going to separate people um who do less or lower parses on this fight as opposed to the higher ones uptime getting from target to target and then restarting your rotation based on what your rage levels are at is going to be key cooldown usage I'm personally still figuring that out for this fight. Depending on his last transformation, you may want to pop Deathwish around the 30-40% mark because there might be a time where he's going to go in and out. I'm still looking for my kill times. I have them now that we've done one week, so I'll use them next week going into it. But right now, going off my kill times, um, Scarum's still up in the air just depending on he might split you might get mind controlled there's a lot of different things so you need to be very fluid with your cooldowns on this fight in order to do well I would not pop wreck on this fight I would save wreck for either Satura or Frank Fankris I guess you if you want you could pop wreck on this fight but there's if you catch a arcane explosion at the wrong time and you have wreck and death wish up I could kill you and that wouldn't be good so I'd be careful um, just be careful on this fight there's a lot going on We'll go ahead and wait uh, for the fight to start. So every, all the melee run up, we get in position under him right there on the stairs. And basically what we're doing is you want to, of course, check the threat. This is, you know, basics with every single fight. Let, um, let, let the tank get threat. Arcane explosions. Make sure that you know where your, your enemy cast bar is. I made sure that mine was in the middle of my screen um, for this so that you can see it and save your interrupts for when he's casting arcane explosion. Um, so now you'll see that he switch there's a threat reset when he switches so you need to be careful if don't keep going hard on one when that you have to make sure that your tank has been able to get aggro back but as as folks are figuring out which one's the real one that needs to be dps down don't be afraid to keep your attacks going on the main target you don't want to blow him up past a certain percentage because then you're going to screw your guild by um getting too many copies but those more auto attacks building rage things like that while we wait for the kill target to be called um that's a good practice to get into so 
just high uptime this is key he does things like teleport so you can spend a lot of time running around on this fight um but you do have some opportunities as right now we've got a lot of chaos going on with um copies being taken to the right places you can cleave you can get a couple cleaves off you can get some whirlwinds off be sure to be dynamic about when you whirlwind and cleave if there's some copies to where you can rip some cleave damage into because of his teleport and split ability that's going to you're going to need and i personally am going to need a couple more reps in order to really figure out when i'm going to be death wishing when i'm going to be um doing all those things so you'll see here right as i pop death wish and my mighty rage pot i legit get mind controlled so and then he teleports again so it's kind of sucks a little bit you know it's always a blue ball feeling when that happens to you as a warrior but what are you going to do it happens to the best of us i think that keeping high uptime on this boss like i said earlier is going to be the most important um thing and um just making sure that you don't get overwhelmed and keeping those interrupts up that's not only going to do a lot of uh, reduce a lot of damage make sure that you don't die it's going to make you look good um so yeah so that's the first boss nothing too crazy but if your guild's unorganized if especially even if your guild's organized and it's the first fight scarum can be a lot so don't go into your first fight trying thinking that this is going to be your parse this you for a lot of us this is going to be a learning experience like it was for me so first boss fight is going to be um satora battle guard satora or a second boss fight i guess satora is you basically pretty simple you dps the ads first you're going to be go from your kill targets from one two to three and then you're going to switch back to uh satura after that this is a pretty straightforward fight in terms of killing one target two targets three targets however your lip in this fight while you're learning the pathing between these ads is going to be best served saving you from dying as opposed to saving it for execute phase to not pull aggro I am not even that ready to even think about that because these ads will start cleaving, they'll start whirlwinding, and they hurt. They hurt. And you can even try to run away from them and they'll run with you because that's this crazy little spinny dance thing you'll see. If that happens to you and you get caught running in the right direction and you, you can't react fast enough, or even if you do react fast enough and you just, there's not enough time, it's, you're not going to have a fun time doing that at all so just be very careful um during that fight save your lip for when as you're learning save a lip for those types of things and if you're able to not need a lip and then you have it for execute phase so you can go real hard at the end more power to you but have that lip button ready to go have lock cookies ready to go have a potion button ready to go have whipper root tubers ready to go if you're that sweaty all right so running in um basically you just you want to let your tanks get in and establish threat it's going to be rough um if you are in the wrong spot and all three of them to start to decide to start whirlwinding so get in and, and start killing your kill targets first get on the ads they do that dumb knockback have your uh intercept ready to go obviously the more uptime you can get on these ads these ads don't have too much health but they can do a good amount of damage quickly and that will um, not be good for you so get in there, um, get the ads down. Not a lot to say, honestly. It's just DPSing the ads down. You definitely do not want to stand in front of him. Don't stand in front of the ads. They do do a cleave, it hurts. So the whirlwind that you're, I'm showing you right now is, and you'll see what I did right there is he cleaved, he started whirlwinding, I lipped so that you can survive those things. Um, once you do finally get to Sotoro, he actually starts to burn down pretty quickly. The only reason that stops him from being a 20 second kill is this, because if you try and stand in that whirlwind, it's GG because they, they need to heal the tanks through it. He just, he, he's all over the place. It's pretty crazy. So when he's doing that, um, he can really wreck like the entire raid. So you have to wait, um, for him to get back with the tanks and then you can start going hard again. I believe he drops threat as well after he does those whirlwinds. So this fight's kind of shitty if i'm being honest with you he's always whirlwinding um you pop your cooldown do you think he's like at 20 seconds left so you pop your cooldowns and he's whirlwinds and so you waste your death wish or god forbid recklessness um just sitting there because you can't charge in and, and take the damage i guess that might be a good way you could use a lip um in the future is if you know that there's like this amount of hp right now and you can get him killed in like six seconds go ahead and use your 
um you'll see with my blue balls right now look at this i um this is a better for ranged honestly this fight there's nothing you can do when he's whirlwind and you'll just die so um you know once he does that once you get him down to like you can get him down pretty quick once he stops but you know it's unfortunate that you waste cooldowns like that um that's satura i'll make a more detailed guide obviously once um i have more time to mess with these fights but this on the surface for for satura adds first high up time on the ads have intercept ready to go um save intercept for a knockback don't stand in front of those ads they will hurt you and also on uh satura um try and use your cooldowns directly after when you're in execute phase range and directly after a whirlwind because if you try and use them uh to if you use them if you use your cooldowns too early like if you try how fast he melts is pretty quick so you think like oh this reminds me of like flame gore i can pop death wish at like 50 percent, but you can't because he's going to whirlwind two or three times during those percentages so it's actually like twice as long as you think it is so because of that it's hard to time cooldowns so more theory crafting to come as we learn when to time our cooldowns correctly on that fight but that might be a fight for the fire mages as you'll see my gm bibbo crushing it on that fight so going to be um rough on that one moving forward so the next boss over here is fankris now fankris is the fight that you can really crush um damage on because he's quick he doesn't really do a lot he does summon some ads that you need to dps down but you can cleave a lot of them and also um fankris is going to be a fight that it's going to be really easy to time your cooldowns for because he doesn't really go anywhere he just kind of sits there and you don't need to do a lot there so fangers is going to be your magmadar type fight and my camera keeps dying guys so i am that's gg to me i am exiting this video from a uh in-person perspective we're just going to do it live on the voiceover of the vod Okay, so we're about to pull Thankris. Um, you know, you really need to be careful as to how you run out from this corner. This is how we do it. We, we directly leave, we, we move direct from this corner down into around Thankris. And Thankris is pretty straightforward. Not a ton of mechanics. Don't stand in front of him. Um, no, I don't think there's any threat drops. You can pretty much just really get your DPS going um, once he's in place and just make sure to cleave down the ads and you're gonna do just fine on, on, on Fankris. D depending on, I actually switched to Diamond Flash for this fight because I knew that he's kind of a shorter fight just depending on just how much damage we do. So we basically get in there and you're going to see like ads spawn we switch to the ads, we kill them, but this is really just a single target magmadar type of fight and it's also a good opportunity to throw sappers out too like i think i sapper right here yes yep nice sapper right there a little whirlwind action take you to the top of the damage meter real fast um you can rip cleaves right now if you want i should be queuing cleave yep so yeah guys i mean a lot of ads right here good opportunity for if you have sappers this is when you use them um, because that's going to really just do a lot of good damage for you but, you know, once you get back onto Fankris, I think I should pop, um, this is, these are the ads we switched to right now. They die really fast. So like, if you're far away, don't switch to it just because um, it's gonna be, be dead before you get there and you're gonna run there for nothing. Um, but if you're right there, switch to it. And the great thing about this fight is, um, I think I should have used my Diamond Flask a bit earlier. Um, wow, when did I use it? There we go, use it at 50% here. And single target guys, I mean, not a lot going on. Gotta love these fights, especially now that they're a little bit more rare and all the craziness uh, that we got going on here in, in BWL. But yeah, I mean, probably could death wish right around now-ish. Um, oh, okay, called it for myself. And right now, if you had wreck, you'd wanna pop it right now. Getting into the nice execute phase and boom. I think we hit a mighty rage pot, yep. And we crank those nice big numbers we love so much out and we actually get the um we don't get anything good so that's fankris not a lot going on there guys but those are the best fights aren't they
All right, everybody, thanks for watching. This has been part one of my AQ first impressions video. Next part coming out soon. I didn't want to make the video too long. Just wanted to give you guys my first impressions of these first few boss fights. More coming soon. Thanks, everybody, for watching. If you could drop a like and subscribe to the video, that would be very much appreciated. And I will see you all on the next one. Peace.